the power we have through faith, according to Hebrews 11, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32. And what shall I say more or more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and, Bar and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith, everybody shout, through faith, subdued kingdoms. Wow, that's, that's big right there. They subdued whole kingdoms through faith. I want that. I want that kind of power in my life to subdue the things that God says I could have victory over and believe God for. Subdue kingdom, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. Wow. The Bible says that our enemy is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's going to and fro. We know that's the devil. The devil is our enemy. We want to stop the mouth of the devil. Amen. Quench the violence of fire. Escape the edge of the sword. And this is all dangerous things, but through faith they escape these things. Out of weakness were made strong. Some versions say, out of sickness were made well. Wax valiant in fight turned to flight the armies of the aliens. And that word there, alien, is not from another planet, folks. That, that is people that did not belong in their land that were trying to take things from them. And that's what he's talking about. Things that didn't belong to them. They're trying to steal their stuff. Trying to take and damage and destroy their stuff. And lead them away prisoners. So that's the power of faith. Power through faith. Let's make our confession. If you've got your word in your hand or on your phone or on your electronic device, just raise it up. Say this with me. I will believe God's word. I will be who it says I can be. I will do what it says I can do. To God be the glory forever and forever. And everybody shouted amen. You may be seated this morning. What does the Bible say about faith? Well, this says a lot right here. There's some powerful things just in this, these three verses of Scripture that tells us a lot about the power that we have in faith or through faith. And God has given us the faith. The Bible said that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So the more I hear it, the more of it I'll have. Amen. The more I hear God's Word, the more of His powerful faith that I'll have in my life. You never can get too much of God's Word in your life. And the Bible says that there, there were people that bounded around the frontlets of their head. In other words, they'd wear head garments or, or they would wear hats or headbands. Uh, around their heads and having on the frontlets of that. How many has got a hat or something you wear on your head that's got a scripture or some great saying about God or some promise that, that you have? I've got some of those myself. And this is kind of what it's talking about. It was so important to them. They wanted to be reminded. Every time I look in the mirror with that hat on, I see a verse of scripture speaking into my life, committing it to memory. And the Bible says it's important because that's where this powerful God faith comes from. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. God gave us His Word so that we could have this kind of powerful faith working in our life. How many want more faith? Amen. The Bible tells us we can have more. Our faith can increase. It can rise to another level. And I want to talk about that. I just want to just talk simply about Gideon. He, he listed a tremendous a lineup. If you had a ball team, these were the kind of guys you would want on your team. The, the, you'd want them, if you were baseball, you'd want them in your starting lineup, your football, you'd want them. And, and if you're on God's team, you would want these people 
on your team. And you, these were the people you would want fighting with you along by your side because there were people that had strong faith. Now, I want you to notice they were not perfect people. You need to study their lives and see that being perfect is not how you get great faith. Because if that was the qualification, none of us would qualify, right? We would all fall short. Amen. Only one perfect is Jesus, and I'm glad that he took away all the blame off of my life and put his perfectness on my life. So when God sees me, he sees his son who died for me. The blood has covered our life, and we've been redeemed. That word redeemed means that the price has been paid, and we belong to the Lord. So when we are looked at, God's not angry or mad at me anymore because I'm his son through Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, that's something to shout about right there. So when he looks at me, he sees he's proud papa. And you, you got to understand that, you know, when I, when I see my boys, uh, my Jacob and, and, and my Asher and my Levi, my two grandsons, had Levi all day yesterday. Believe you me, I love that boy, and he's got people around that little itty bitty bitty finger of his. And uh, Rachel, every now and then, after, you know, Levi, he's 18 months, and, man, he can boss her around. I thought Asher was bad. I'm going to tell you what, Levi can run him a good race in that. He can tell you just what he wants, and, and if you ain't fast enough, he can tell you he's not happy with the timing either uh, that you have on your clock. Uh, but, but, but I want you to know, I, I realize as much as I love that baby, Jay, he ain't perfect. No, he's, he's 18 months, and he's a beautiful little thing. And I know Asher's not perfect, and, and, and I know that, that Levi's not perfect, and my, my sweet Jacob, he's not perfect. I know that, but he's my son. And these boys, they're my grandsons. And when I look at them, I, it just the love in my heart, <laughs> it just melts all the, the blaring imperfections in their life. And I thank you, God, that when you look at Randy Rigney, you see a son that you love and that you're proud of, and you know I'm not perfect. But this boy's got faith. And the Bible says it was counted unto me as his righteousness. And that's what makes me righteous in the sight of God is faith in Jesus Christ. And that kind of powerful faith is at work in our life. And it was at work in their life all the way back in the Old Testament because the Bible said Abraham had faith and it was accounted unto him as righteousness. And then in the New Testament, we read how important that Abraham's faith in God is to us because he walked before us. And even in a time when he was at a disadvantage because he was under the law or he was under the Old Testament principles, we'll find that he broke out of the limitations because he had faith. And listen to what the Bible says. I, I, want, I want you to see what the Bible says about how at disadvantaged people in the Old Testament was because of just when they were born. The Bible tells us in Galatians 3, I'm going to read out of the extended Bible. It says, before this faith came, we were all held prisoner by the law. Tell me that's not a disadvantage. The, the Old Testament, the old economy, the old covenant, he said we were all held prisoner or susceptible to be held back by the law. The, the, the King James Version says we were kept under the law. That means we were held back, under, under, held back. You'll never reach your full potential because of the time in which you live. And I want you to keep that in mind. We had no freedom, the expanded Bible says, or we were locked up is a clearer version. Until God showed us the way of faith. Aren't you glad you found Jesus in the way of faith? And when God gave us a revelation of the way of faith, woo, the sky's the limit, church. We are not in prison anymore. We're not locked away under that old economy anymore. But by grace, we are saved through faith. And we can reach 
our full potential. Now, I want you to see how some people in the Old Testament, Testament grabbed that Abraham faith like Abraham did and realized they could break out from under the, the, the limits of the law and they didn't have to just settle for the, the way things were. And Gideon was one of them. He saw that, hey, my father Abraham, he believed God and God did some incredible things in his life. He was living in a time where the enemy had totally overrun the people of God. Now, I've got to be brief. We've got plans. But I want to leave you with this. Even at a disadvantage, he realized how to break out of his limitations. He realized how to come out from under that bondage and, and all of those holdbacks because of the time he was living in. And the people of God, they had, had turned their back on God, and the enemy had gained an advantage because they didn't have any power. They didn't have any faith working in their life. And the Midianites were their enemies at that time and the Bible says they looked like grasshoppers. There were so many of them. Aren't you Aren't you tired of the enemy just multiplying, multiplying, multiplying and just literally taking over seemingly everything? How do we stop that? We got power through faith. How do we overcome those odds? We got power through faith. I want you to know if you'll learn that kind of power, you'll never feel like the chips are always against you because the Bible says, if God be for you, who can be against you? How many know God's for me? Can you say that this morning? I got faith. Jesus is for me. If he is for me, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm in the majority. And my side's going to win every time. And that's the way Gideon felt. But he didn't always feel that way because he didn't always have faith. And the Bible says he was out there threshing wheat. And he wanted to hide it from the Midianites. Because every time something good happened, the Midianites would come and steal it from him. And so he wasn't confronting them. He was just trying to hide everything from them, trying to keep it away from them. Listen to what the Bible says. And, and I know i got to be brief, but well, i just got to leave this with you this morning. This is what the Bible says. The blessing, Isaiah 28, it's the Amplified. A spirit of justice for him who sits in judgment or administrates the, the Word of God is what he's talking about. A strength to those who drive back the battle at the gate. There wasn't nobody at the gate keeping the devil from flooding in. He was coming in by the droves. And the Bible says there's going to be strength for somebody who will stand at the gate and say, devil, you can't go no further. I've got a gate on this thing, and it's to keep you out. And I resist you in the name of Jesus. It's, it's up to us how far we let the devil push us. It's up to us. Church of God, how far we let the devil advance on our stuff and on our territory and in our life. It's up to me how much of the, my mind that I let the devil have. I can draw the line in the sand like Gideon did eventually and say, I'm going to be the man at the gate. Oh, the enemy's coming in and he's taking all of our good harvest. What time was this? What time was it? I want you to understand he was of the tribe of Manasseh. And the Bible tells us he was the poor people in, Mane in Manasseh, in the, in the descendants of Manasseh. And that's what he said. My people are poor. And he said, I want you to know you are a mighty man of valor and the Lord be with you. Well, he sure did. He said, well, it don't look like he's with me. And it, I don't feel like I'm very mighty. That word mighty means you are an army. You're a troop. You, you are many, many warriors. You're, you're a mighty warrior. You're not just a good one, not just a borderline, but you're the best God's got. How many wants to hear God say, hey, look, lady, hey, look, guy, you are the best God's got when you're walking in the power of his faith. Amen. You, you believe that there's nothing impossible with God and nothing too hard for God. You're the best God's got. Gideon wasn't quite there yet, but you see, you got to understand God will start saying things over you before you even become those things he is saying over you. And look, I don't need nobody telling what I used to be and talking about my faults. I don't sit around and I don't, I don't complain to Levi, 18 month old. Boy, I sure wish you had more patience. Boy, I wish you would do what I say and still expect me to do what you say all the time. Boy, I wish you could go get me stuff instead of you coming to me and telling me to go get your stuff. 
Oh, no, 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 no. You don't, you know, I don't want anybody like that. And I don't think Levi does either. I want you to understand God doesn't sit around and talk about our limitations and our faults and our sins which he has put under his blood. What a failure I've been. All my mess ups. When you read this book of faith in, in Hebrews chapter 11, you can read, go back into the Old Testament and you can read about all their faults back there in the history of the Old Testament. But when they made it to this book, there ain't nothing negative said about them. All God talks about in Hebrews is the is their faith and what they accomplished through him and the might that he gave them through faith in his name. And Gideon was there and the Lord was calling him things that he had never yet accomplished in his life. God speaks things over us before we even become them. God speaks things into my life before they even come into my life. I want you to understand something, that if God don't speak it, it ain't going to happen. When Jesus, when, when Jesus stepped out in the beginning, the Bible said, God said, let there be light. And what happened? He said it before it happened, but after he said it, it had to happen. Woo! I want you to know when God said this over Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. Well, it ain't happening. I'm out here hiding from my enemy. Nobody's at the gate. The armies of the enemy are flooding in. Midian is taking everything we got. The Lord has forsaken us. We're poor in my family. You're calling me money, and I don't got no money. I'm broke, busted, and disgusted. Anybody ever been there before? Look, if you're there right now, quit talking about how broke, busted, and disgusted you are and start reading a book about how blessed you are and start speaking the promises and blessings of God and it'll come down into your life if you'll believe His Word over your life. You need to change your word and start lining up with His Word. Criticism. Criticism. Picky, picky. You know, I can't stand picky people. You can't satisfy them. I'm glad God, if God Jay was picky, he sure wouldn't have picked me. I'm so glad he wasn't. But when he got a hold of me, I said, Lord, I sure hope you know what you're doing. Man, I, tell you, I can mess up bad, Lord. I hope you know what you're doing. You want me to preach? Brother Lewis, when he called me to preach when I was just a kid, I said, Lord, you need your head examined. I'm just being honest. I said, I just don't know. I don't know if I can do that. I mean, I, I, it was all kinds of problems just getting up in front of people. You wouldn't have thought that, but, I, but it, just, it just tore me up. And, and, but see, you got to understand, he started speaking things into my life before they could even happen. And just like when he stepped out on darkness and said, let there be light, light had to happen. And things had to be spoken into their place and into existence. The Bible says in Isaiah, he measured out the heavens with a span. That means with the stretch of his hand. He did these things because he's God. And without his word, we are nothing. But in his word, we can stand on it and believe God that it's going to happen in our life. And so he's there. And the enemy is just ravaging the land. And the Lord's speaking things into him. And you know, just like us, we say, why, 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 why? Well, if that's true, why this? Why is that true? If that's true, why is that? Well, if, if, if that's so, why is this happening? Why? You know, people read the Word, and they say, well, if he's God, why is this happening? If he's God, why is that happen? Let me tell you something. Things happen, right? But God's Word can bring power into our life to make a difference in our life and in our situation. And that's what he was doing for Gideon. And I know he can do the same for you. So Gideon, he had to understand that God had a plan. And he was speaking his plan and the ability that God was going to put into his life when he began to walk by faith. And at some point, you know, he, he was a real hesitant. He'd put a fleece out there and say, well, if I'm going to believe this, you know, let do be on it and let the ground be dry. Let do, okay, well, yeah, God, I, I'm not quite there yet. Whatever God has to do to clear up my doubt, God, just go on and do it. Go on and do it. Touch my fleeces. Touch the ground around my fleeces. And if that's not enough, we'll think of some other test. But Lord, just, let's just satisfy the fact 
that when God says something, he will do what he said, for it is impossible for him to lie. And it's time for us, come on, sister, to understand that his word is true. He said, let every man be a liar, but let my word be true. I don't know what's ever been said to your life, but you need to hear what God's got to say about you. You need to understand that God's got a great future. His plans are wonderful. And he has gone before you. And you've got to understand he's speaking things into your life that's hard for you to accept. But you've got to say, Lord, in myself, this is impossible. But with God, all things, shout it with me, all things are possible. And then Jesus turns around and he says, and to him that believeth all oh, things. He just, what, what did he do there? He transferred the power of all things from God to the believer. He said, now I can do all things. That's not hard for you to believe. But I'm saying if you'll believe, you can do all things. He transferred. Let him download that power in you today. Because you need some things done in your life. And it's impossible without God. But with God, all things are possible. How many wants that kind of faith? I want that kind of Gideon faith. Gideon quit doubting after God finally satisfied all his tests. He still seen him. Look, God's not afraid of your tests. God's not afraid of your doubts. But there's a time and a point to where God's going to expect after he pours and pours and pours into you to step up to the plate and start believing. That's why he says, how much more do you need? How many more examples do you need to convince you that God can do these things? He says, you, not, you need to rise up and stand in faith. Let's all stand all over this building. I don't know what you need God to do in your life today, but He is more than able. But He is saying some things over your life that you've probably doubted, you've probably been afraid of, but I want you to know when God speaks things into us and over us, He has to do that before you see it. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. God speaks it, and we have to play catch with God. God speaks a promise, and He throws it out there. Now, who's going to catch it? Who's going to receive it? Some people let it bounce off. Some people drop the ball. But let me tell you, God, give me good hands to catch every word that comes out of your mouth. That's what Jesus told the devil when he says, hey, take these rocks and turn them into bread. And he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's how we're going to live. That's how we're going to be victorious. The Bible says this is the victory that overcometh the world. What is it? Even our faith. Faith is the victory that overcometh the world. Let's raise our hands together. Lord, download into my life the power that comes through faith. I want to hear your word. I want to hear what you're saying. I know what the devil says. I know what the doubting crowd says. I know what the you can't do it, you'll never be that crowd says. I know those things. But I want to know what you say. I want to hear from you. You said we shall live by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. I want to live. I got some more living to do, God. I got some more living to do. And Jesus said, I came that you may have life, that you may live. But not just live, but that you may have it more abundantly. I don't want to just live, Lord. I want that a more abundant life. And I know you got a word of more abundance for us today. Now download it into our spirit. Let this encourage us to believe God. Let us see what Gideon saw eventually and started believing God and routed the enemy. He became the gatekeeper. He became the one to keep the enemy from coming in a gate. Lord God, because now he understood, God gave him that kind of power and called him into that kind of warfare to be a champion 
an overcomer. You said we are more than conquerors through him that loved us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, through him that loved us. We're not that because we say we are. We're that because you called us that. We, we are that because you say we are. And at that point, we have to believe who you say I am. And we have to believe what you have spoken into our heart. Lord God, let your word of promise go forth and let it speak to every heart this morning in Jesus' name. Because in you we have a hope and we have a future. We have a hope-filled life. Lord, your will is not to give us disaster, but your will is to bless and prosper. Lord God, even as our soul prospers and be in health, Lord God, give health right now. Speak a word of health and healing over every sick body. Every person is struggling with health at whatever level that they are at. God, we've got some serious cases. But God, the Bible says you sent your word and healed them. You sent your word and healed them. There's power in the healing word of Jesus. Lord God, there's people struggling in their finances right now. Let them understand that prosperity comes from you. Promotion comes from you. Blessing comes from you. You gave us this word and we receive it for us. We receive it for our occupation. We receive it for our business. We receive it for our company. We receive it for our family. We receive it for our children and our children's children. We speak success and prosperity and divine health and healing over every single person in our family today in Jesus name hallelujah and Lord all of this and eternal life too all of this and heaven too all of this and salvation and deliverance too in Jesus name it's all ours in the Lord and we claim it in Jesus name I tell you, there are things that you can stand at the gate and draw the line and say, Devil, you're not coming in it. You, you, I've had it with you. I'm not letting you come in and take my harvest. Now, today is Pentecost Sunday, and the reason I picked Gideon is because he was gathering the wheat, and we all understand the time. Uh, Easter is the barley harvest, the beginning of barley harvest, and the celebration of Pentecost is... The wheat harvest, the beginning of the wheat harvest. So we know this happened the same time today. We're, we're, we're celebrating the 50th day from first fruits from Easter. And that is Pentecost. Praise God. Brother Ricky, I want all that God's Pentecost has for me. Every bit of it. The Bible said, tell you in Jerusalem, tell you receive power from on high. We know that God give us power. Power in the Holy Ghost. He gives us power through faith. He gives us power and we can be victorious. Somebody shout, yes! Hallelujah. Let's receive our blessing. And don't forget the table set up for the graduates. We want to honor them. Go by their table after church and spend a little time with them. Tell them how proud you are. Encourage them. How many believe in the blessing of the Lord? Let's lift our hands and let's just let the Word of God speak blessing over us. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make His face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up His countenance upon thee and and give thee peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. And everybody shouted, Amen. Be blessed in Jesus Christ. Remember to go by those tables in the back. And, and just spend a little time with these.